of the Environmental Advisory Board is called to order on April 21st. Welcome everyone. The members of the Environmental Advisory Board were appointed by the City Council. We serve voluntarily. The Board's objective is to provide citizen insight to the City Council and staff on environmental activities within and affecting the City of Clearwater. Agendas of today's meeting are on the wall at the entrance to the Chamber. Please remember to turn off your cell phones and electronic devices. <clears throat> to ensure a complete record of the Board's actions, we ask that anyone speaking clearly state your name and spell it for the Clerk. Will members of the Board and staff please introduce yourselves? Um, we'll start. Marita Lynch. Jared Leone. John Thomas. Lena Wentworth. Sarah Kessler, staff liaison. Thank you. Our first order of business is to review and approve the minutes of the board's last meeting. Um, board members, are there any changes or corrections? None, so moved. Okay. May I have a second? I'll second. All right, great. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Great. Aye. Great. Um, minutes are approved. We'll move on to the next item. Um, citizens to be heard about items not on the agenda. Is there anyone here to speak about items not on the agenda? Please come forward. You'll have three minutes to speak on anything that's not on today's agenda. Okay. Thanks. Good afternoon. I'm Kathleen Beckman, Clearwater resident and city council member. Just wanted to say uh, thank you for serving on this board. Um, you're one of my uh, favorite boards. And I just wanted to give you a little update on what I've been doing related to uh, the environment. Um, right now, where I I wanted to bring up Imagine Clearwater and Coachman Park, and we're at the stage now where we are looking at adding back value-added amenities and features. Um, I continue to push for sustainability um, and environmentally friendly choices as we move forward with the development of that park. Um, what's really exciting is we're also in varying stages of updating three key plans in Clearwater, three key documents, and that's the comprehensive plan, which is in the very early stages, the strategic plan, which we're, uh, the city council members are going to be meeting or, or having um, individual meetings with a facilitator, and then we'll be working together. And then, as you know, green print is, um, has been updated and um, will be presented with that. And I'm going to be asking questions about how much shaping we can do uh, with with green print as we're presented with those updates and how to involve residents in that and hopefully you all as well so the strategic plan the comprehensive plan comprehensive plan dealing with uh, land use it also has uh, categories related to um, conservation coastal green space rec space open space and so those are things that are um, important to me that relate to the environment. So I'm gathering my thoughts and ideas, uh, figuring out what questions I want to ask, what opportunities we have. If you're interested at all in learning more or want to talk with me, please reach out and, and we can sit down and have a conversation. Um, and then finally, I wanted to share with you that, you know, I've served for uh, just a little over a year. It's been exciting. It's um, it's been this huge learning curve. But one of the, the most important takeaways I, I have is that truly, nearly at every single council meeting, there is an opportunity to make a decision that affects our environment and saves money. Almost, you know, at the same time, almost every single meeting, you can ask a question or push for an initiative or um, follow up with a developer. But there are opportunities all the time, and I find that really exciting. And... Um, I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, making some positive change this summer. So thank you all for being part of what we do in the city. Thank you very much, Kathleen. All right. Um, yeah. Yes, thank you. I do have other people to come speak. Hello, everybody. Yes. We are present from the neighborhood of the Bellevue. Oh, okay. Can you please state your name? My name is Dagmar Ortiz. I'm the vice president of the Bellevue neighborhood. Beautiful. Sorry, did you your name for me? Dagmar, D-A-G-M-A-R, Dagmar Ortiz. I'm the vice president of the association, and we have an amazing project that we want to present. And for that, I have my amazing friend that she's <laughs> going to present it. Oh, thank you for coming out. Thank you. 
Thank you. Hello, my name is Betsy Putterman. Betsy Putterman, just like it sounds. Uh, and I'm a, a resident of the Bellevue Lake area, and I uh, am also a member of the Bellevue Lake Neighborhood Association. And we have put together uh, a really great program for the environment. It's a Restore the Lake Bellevue petition. We're putting a petition, and I think that petition is, where's that going tomorrow, Dagmar? It's going to the mayor for the city. It's going to the city tomorrow. Our petition signed by however many people the various members were able to collect. So some of the points on them, in, in terms of what you would be interested in, which is uh, we want to create an ecology program for the youth. We're, uh, right now, we're actually uh, cooperation with the Lake Watch, uh, University of Florida research program, and they are going to be testing water samples out of our lake well, at least once a month. And uh, some of our members are, are part of that, and I know Dagmar and uh, the president went and got uh, you know, the education on how to do it. So we're very interested in making sure that Bellevue Lake gets uh, restored. It was originally, there's three springs in the lake, freshwater springs, it's a spread, spring, sp spring, you know, but it has a lot of garbage and stuff that goes into the lake. So we're going to be improving the trash abatement throughout the neighborhood and around the lake. And uh, we're soliciting the city of Clearwater to earmark some uh, more, more, more for the seasonal manage of overgrowth this last year. There was so much algae in the lake that you could almost walk across it. And uh, there was some, uh, some progress in that, but we want to make sure that continues. And uh, it, it's, uh, I don't know if anybody, I think some of these may have been delivered to some of you, but uh, cleanup of trash in the water deposited by stormwater drains and construct filters for stormwater drains to limit trash entering the lake. And then another point, these are that we're trying to get some funding for is uh, the lake is largely, you know, you can't swim in it, you can't, you can fish, but we would like to have uh, the greenies, the Clearwater greenies, which I'm sure you guys are, know who they are, yes? The, the Clearwater greenies are a group of people who are advocates of, in, of the improvement in the environment, and they go out and clean up various places. Once a month they were coming, and now we set it up so once a month we have a cleanup. But, there's no access into the lake. You can't, you know, it's muck. The minute you step into it, you're into muck. And so they were using kayaks. Mm -hmm. And so we would like to have a, a little launch pad with a deck so that we could get into the lake to do better cleanup. And then the last thing is, you know, just uh, user-friendly, create some ki kiosks to inform the walking. We have a nice walking trail. It does need some improvement. It's gotten kind of damaged over the years. Uh, but uh, to create a walking trail uh, to about the, uh, let me see. Create kiosks to inform the walking trail participants about the habitat and lake. There's a lot of birds out there, various fish. It's really, it's a lovely spot that's kind of been allowed to, it's pretty good, but we want to make it even better. And we want to put some flowers around the walking trail. So those are the things that are on the petition. We're going to send it to the city, but we wanted to inform you about it because we know you guys have some clout. And uh, <laughs> you might be able to help us along with our, with our plans. Well, thank you. So does anybody have any questions? I have a comment. Can I comment on the comment? Please go right out. Um, yeah, I visited the lake, and um, I just want to say it's a beautiful lake. And I've been to Ross Norton, you know, and I've looked at the lake out through the windows of not Ross Norton uh, Rec Center. But, um, um, you know, I had never walked it until last month. And uh, it has, and it definitely needs to be preserved and restored. There's trash, even, you know, with the trash cleanups every month, there's, there's just, there's litter. There's, you know, there's everything from... Um, uh, you know, carry out trash, food trash, uh, you know, all around the edges. And but the, it's it's a lovely ecosystem uh, with uh, bird populations quite diverse. You know, I saw I'm kind of getting into bird watching, so I saw anhinga and a roseate uh, spoonbill. He was looking a little anemic, but uh, <laughs> you know, so he's probably characterizing the lake that needs it needs work. Uh, it's gorgeous, and there are exercise. Um, uh, 
set, you know, centers like little exercise, you know, uh, pads of equipment. It's and it, it could use some updating. Uh, so being a center of this community, I think this neighborhood, um, you know, but would benefit tremendously if uh, the lake was improved. And uh, and I'd like to suggest maybe that we might want to come out at, on one of our outings to visit this lake and to uh, meet with the folks uh, with the neighborhood association and the folks behind that and see what kind of uh, what we can do to help them. Maybe even have the Parks and Rec Board come along with us for an outing. That would be awesome. Thank you. That's great. Anybody yeah, else? Please go right on. Oh, yeah. Does the city own the entire uh, perimeter land around the, the lake? Yes. So it's basically totally under city no. control. Yeah, I mean the there is a the there's a train track. There's one side that it owns most of it. Oh, okay. There's there's one edge that it does not own, but it owns eighty five percent of it. There so. is a rail a railroad track on one end, but I think the the lake itself is still part of that. It's just part of that uh, easement on that side. Is owned by the railroad. Yeah, there's one there's one residential area that the city doesn't own, like the edge of it, but we own the lake as a whole. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Marita. I have two questions for you. What are the boundaries of the Bellevue neighborhood? I'm sorry, I wasn't able to hear you. What are the boundaries of the Bellevue neighborhood? That is a very good question. Generally speaking, I think it's like within a, like a, several miles of the perimeter of the lake. Several miles. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Lakeview. Right. We have um, Fort Harrison. Okay. And we have Bel Air. Okay. And we have a little bit of Missouri. Okay. Some okay. people say Missouri and other people say a little bit of Missouri. Okay. But that's sort of square. Okay. Lakeview, Fort Harrison, Bel Air, and Missouri. Okay. How many homes are there? I'm just curious, I'm a HOA president. <laughs> That's a good question, but I'm bringing you next meeting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my second question is, you, you asked us for support. Do you have an idea of what that support looks like? Do you have specific recommenda questions or recommendations or requests? We don't, but perhaps you should get, can give us some guidelines on what we might ask for. That's why we're here. It's, you know, it's kind of a... It's a new thing for us to be involving you guys, and we just think that. Uh, so you've identified what you need. You've identified the programs that you want to accomplish. Do you are you looking for help with the means in order to get those accomplished? Do you? Yeah, I'm sure. Yes. Yeah, I'm sure that you know we need that. Yeah. That's the we want to ask for those to earmark funding for these particular points. Okay. Yeah. I'm curious. Um, what led to the petition, and how long have you guys been um, involved in working toward this? Well, the Bellevue Lake Neighborhood Association has been in existence for 50 years, mm -hmm. which is pretty incredible. And uh, I've been a member of four years. I think Dagmar's been a member for several more. And we have, uh, you know, maybe at the best, maybe about 35 or 40 people that are interested in improving the area. but. I think, so we come once a month, we have a meeting once a month, and because we are the Bellevue Lake, we do have some city lake, city, uh, some of the city officials, like Kathleen has come, come to our meetings, uh, that will come, and... Uh, I guess I'm curious, because the lake's been there, the neighborhood has been there for a long time, what now has led to why you okay. are pushing for okay. this? Basically, we can say as soon as, as we grow on the activities and as we grow as, as an association, we started with this program that is the mural on the floor. Okay. I think you guys are familiar. We did that, the painting this, the mural on the floor. Mm -hmm. is on this the, the street murals? Yeah, the street yeah. mural. And we got, okay, that makes you feel good. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next program that the city has been helping us, we found the 500, the city Clearwater found the 500,000 allocation for Bel Belmont Park that is in my neighborhood too. Okay. And then all those things when you do things and then the people back you up and then you say, oh, I'm strong. We can go for the next one, right? Sure, sure. The next okay. project, what is? The next project is the lake. Okay. 
And now it's like, okay, if we did those two projects, that means you feel stronger, we can go a little bit more, and we reach for more things now, we get the whole lake, that is a whole thing, it's like a, it's huge. Okay, yeah, no, that's great. I just was curious, because it sounds like you have been working with the city in the past on different different projects to get to this point, so. Yeah, city has been in every meeting with us, police, police department has been in every meeting with us, and it's a big uh, effort of the city to improve that neighborhood. Sure. And they are backing us and giving the, giving us strength, basically. And have you gone to the Parks and Rec Advisory Board or anyone no, at sir, the... No, you okay. are the first one. Oh, okay, no. <laughs> I just was curious where you were in the process, so... Just um, starting to get out. Okay, very well. We collect signatures. Our president is very... Our treasury is very active, our yeah. secretary. He has the idea, and we back him up. And that's why we are promoting right now, letting you guys know, I don't know what your potentials are, I don't know how you can help us, but you are there, and I'm here, and we are talking. Yeah, no, I'm, sh I'm sure um, we could put together, or if you had a letter or something in support that we could send along to the the city yeah. city leaders as well to show support yeah. for okay. the projects and efforts that you guys are doing, we could... Nice. Yeah. One question primarily for Sarah. Sarah... Uh, does the city have uh, management plans for you know complexes like this where we have city-owned facilities and you know a water body of 30 acres? There probably aren't that many, uh, and there's quite a number of functions. It seems that this uh, lake serves. I'm sure there's a stormwater function. I don't know if there's any FEMA issues uh, related to it, as well as you know all the recreational aspects and the water quality that's been ma uh, mentioned, but it would seem prudent that a uh, facility of this scale uh, should have some kind of a man an overall management uh, plan for it that's uh, comprehensive in nature and addresses a lot of the issues that uh, the folks so here today have raised. As far as addressing all of the issues, it, it doesn't, but um, I, I've been to their meetings a couple of times and We've had some issues, well, we had a, a, a lake maintenance contract, and our contractor failed, and that was the lake where it was quite obvious that they really, really failed. So we fired them, but then we had to go back out for an RFP and had to start over again. And so we have a lake maintenance contract that goes out and maintains inv invasive exotics and maintains that lake for flow. So um, there's, like at the south end, there's a, one of the streams that comes in there. We make sure that that's always open. Um, sometimes it gets a little choked with stuff, mostly exotic, so it's pretty easy to, to remove that stuff. Um, and then at the north end, there isn't a huge issue up there, but that's where the outfall is for the lake. So we make sure that it maintains for flow. On the west side of the lake is a mitigation area that we have plantings, and so we do maintain the plantings over there and maintain the habitat over on that side. Um, that? I'm sorry? What side is that? That's west. on the west side of west the lake, side. near the railroad tracks. Okay. Over on that side. Um, and so we do maintain for that. Uh, when uh, we did some improvements to that lake, um, over 10 years ago, I would guess now, maybe 10 years in that realm of time. And during that time, we did a big assessment of the lake. We looked at the neighborhood too, and we actually put some bigger, not bigger, deeper areas in there for subsistence fishing. Like, so you can actually fish from shore in certain places. Well, you'll be able to get fish because it's, it's deeper, it's not nearly as shallow. So we've looked at a lot of things on that lake and um, I, I won't say that we have a management plan for the lake, like we don't have a written book of a management plan, um, but we certainly have plans for that lake as far as the maintenance of it and making sure that it is um, as good as it should be, which we're getting there. It's, it's getting closer, a lot closer to what it's supposed to be. Um, stormwater maintenance goes out there on a regular basis, but it just isn't often enough. Um, so, I mean, they do some trash removal, but it just isn't often enough. And um, so I know, I know you guys have talked to stormwater maintenance about it as well. And um, we have uh, the community liaison, like the neighborhoods coordinator, um, is really like spearheading kind of 
what their issues are and bringing it back to specific departments as far as things that need to be done. Um, I know trash cans were talked about, like putting around the trail some few more trash cans and making sure that we have, um, maybe it would help to put up some signs and I think we're, we're talking about doing that. So he's coordinating with like our sign shop to add um, necessary signs um, about dumping or picking up after your pets and things like that. The water quality though is good enough for fish to live in it? Yeah, the water quality is good enough for that. Um, so yeah, we do have issues with algae as all of our lakes do. Um, and you know, there's hydrilla in there. So we maintain for those things. Um, Lake Watch is going to be able to, so they'll do sampling on a regular basis, and so that will go into the DEP database, so anybody will be able to look at the water quality that's there. Um, but it's, it's, it's fishable, yep. so it's, it's good. And so, so should we uh, make a motion to draft a recommendation in support of them, or, or actually draft a recommendation? Right. How do we go about that, Sarah, to support them if we wanted to write a letter in support? If they're, you guys are going to take this to the council sooner than later, we don't meet again until July, and we don't have anything. So how would we be able to... to um, if you want to draft something, you need to draft it and agree to it today mm -hmm. if, you're, if you want to send something to the council. Um, okay. If, Unless, because you... Oh, we can do that. Yeah, we can do that. Okay. Short and to the point. Okay. Yeah. Let's, um, if you want to... Let's continue with our agenda items, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. we'll come back to this under, um, like, the board members to be heard and, Perfect. And, and talk about it at that point. Great. As long as we can agree that you guys are going to stick around and help us out. Yep. Sorry. Can you... Yep. Will you stay in the meeting so you can help us out with that? Sure. Okay. Thank you. And thank you so much. And I want to say one last thing. See, if the water you have been in the meetings have been putting already garbage cans. They are really working with us and we really appreciate that. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> anyone else to speak to items not on? Thank you. Let's come forward. Hello, my name is Brian Beckman. Uh, I, I sent all of you an email earlier today on an update for Q1 solar installations in the city. I won't go over that. Uh, in any detail, but it is continuing to be a, a great pace of installations in the city, people continuing to realize uh, that value both from a personal uh, dollar benefit, but also collectively from an environmental perspective of reducing emissions. But I also wanted to mention something I didn't put in that email. There is the greater St. Pete uh, uh, Canellas uh, solar co-op that is still in progress. I got an email from the person that manages that for Solar United Neighbors that they're going to be extending that um, sign-up deadline through May 28th. Um, I think they've got currently a little bit over 100 people that have signed up. I think normally they try to set a goal of around 200 or so. Um, and you know, that's across the county, but there are a number of people that are Clearwater residents that are signing up for that. And it's a great opportunity for uh, people to, uh, you know, go with a selected vendor that's been vetted um, through an RFP process and will produce a great price for people. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Oh, thank, thank you very you. much. What's the extension date? It is through May 28th, the okay. sign-up deadline, the new sign-up deadline. Thank you. And they did, they did select a vendor or an installer. Um, their process is once they get a certain number signed up, maybe it's 50 or, or, or something like that, they begin that RFP process, they select an installer, so that installer is Solar Energy World that they've selected. What's the name of it? Solar Energy World. World? I think they're based out of Tampa. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Any other questions? Thank you, Brian. All right, any others, anyone else to speak on items not on the agenda? Okay. All right, thank you. Um, we'll move on to new business, uh, presentation about water quality monitoring program by Robin Barnes uh, from the Pinellas County Division of Environmental Management. Please come forward, thank you, Robin. Good afternoon, or evening, whatever this is. <laughs> and where did you say that? Oh, yeah, it just. How do I get this? Oh, there it goes. 
I'm Robin Barnes. I'm an environmental, they call us a specialist, but I like to call myself a scientist. <laughs> um, uh, I've been working for the county for seven years as of today. Congratulations. Um, and I'm here to talk to you about our, our water quality program. Um, so our, um, our, our topics today will be our, um, uh, the water quality monitoring program in general and a summary of some of the data that we have collected over the years, um, what, what those standards are based off of, whether they're, whether they're good or bad, um, and to show you some of your clear water, water bottles, at least the ones that we collect water samples in. All right, so the water quality monitoring program is, um, there's really like four parts of it. There's an ambient water monitoring part of it, where we go out and collect water samples and Anyone who's uh, of, of the same thing that I am, we all collect water samples, but then we collect different, we do different stuff depending on who we are. So there's different parts of the equation, I guess. So there's the ambient water quality monitoring, the biological sampling, which is one of the other things that I do. Um, seagrass surveys, some people do that. I, I, I do a little bit of it. Um, and then we do benthic bay monitoring, which is collecting sediment samples from the, the bay and ID what's in there, and plus also doing the um, analysis of the sediment itself. Is that Tampa Bay or Clearwater Harbor or what area? What area are you talking about? Tampa, the bay, you said the bay? Tampa? Um, our water quality monitoring, um, the, we have stuff that is inland, the creeks and the lakes. That's kind of its own little thing because it's that, the, all those sites are kind of set. They're, um, I was going to talk about that next, but. Um, uh, and then we do, um, we also do the intercoastal waterway and Tampa Bay. So okay. they, they're all kind of separated out. So there's multiple programs inside. There. <coughs> uh, it was started in 1990, way before I was um, up there. Um, and it was really just to, to, to get data so the county knew what their water quality was and really to prioritize how to, uh, how to spend money to make that water quality better. So the um, water quality monitoring program, as you were saying, uh, is kind of broken up into two parts. There's a there's a fixed part of it, and then there's a random part of it. The fixed part of it, we have uh, 54 sites. They are um, mostly creeks, but there are a couple of lakes in there, like Chautauqua, um, Alligator Lake. But um, most of them are streams and canals and ditches. Um, but they're uh, eight times a year we do those. Um, same 54 sites all the time, and we measure in, in the field. We have a YSI, and we measure the pH and the salinity and the conductivity, and then we also take um, samples that go to our lab and the, um, the, 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 the water treatment plant is our, our lab that we take our stuff to, and they test for the nitrogen, the phosphorus, the, the all, all the stuff that that they need to test for. And the other part, the random part, is uh, the, the two big lakes, Lake Seminole, Lake Tarpon, um, Tampa Bay, which is broken up into, um, like, as you can see on there, like the different colors are our different, um, th that's just the way we broke up the bay. And uh, we call them strata. So um, each one of those strata um, four, gets four samples eight times a year. And the same stuff is done on them as is done on the uh, land, the, the what we call land run sites. Um, the same uh, set of bottles and everything is collected for that data. And the biological monitoring is done um, twice a year. It's done one, uh, once before it starts raining a lot and once after it starts raining a lot. And this is only done on the streams and it's done to collect um, uh, mostly insect larvae, 
and to 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 help I to see if the uh, if the um, if the stream is healthy or not. There's a, a, a biological index that was created by DEP, and if and you, what you do is you ID the the stuff that you get from the sample, and it it's it spits out a number basically, and that number is 40. If it's above that 40 number, then the the stream is considered not impaired. It, it's considered to have habitat and a, able to to support the diversity of life needed to get that score. And if it's below that score, it, it, it does not pass. And this is the um, the, the clear water, water bodies that we um, sample, and we do um, we do an SCI on all of these. And about half of them pass, and about half of them don't. On the biological, in, the index, the the SCI, uh, it's, it, and it's for different reasons. A lot of it's hydrology because there's a lot of water that rushes into most of these, and it just kind of washes them out to the to the bay. But some of them, it really it, it's not hydrology; it's something else. But but a lot of them do pass. So some of them, like I said, half of them are good, half of them are not. And we also look for algae in the creeks which most of them are pretty good for algae, but a lot of them are kind of canopy covered, so they don't, they don't get a lot of direct sunlight, so they really don't get algae built up on them. And we also look for new uh, invasive vegetation along the banks and stuff. And you, you get about, uh, again, about half of them are good, half of them are, are, are bad. I don't want to jump in in case, but I'm going to. No, go ahead. Are you going to get to what you do when you find poor results, or are you going to tell us about the action plan follow-up? Uh, I'm sorry, what did you say? When you, what, are you going to tell us about what the action plan is once you see a poor result? Is that part of your presentation? Um, not really. Um, th there's, there's, there's very little that, um, unless you find a, a definitive cause for it, there's, there, you can't really do much about the, the biological part of it anyway. Uh, th there are a couple of creeks that they're trying to like a lot of these things are, are, are straight, mostly straightened, so they, they don't act like creeks. So there's no place for the bugs to kind of like hang on to in a, like a corner or something. But there's a couple of them that they're trying to you know make like a creek again, and that's probably your only option for, for doing you know uh, for doing something like that. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, okay, uh, and we do seagrass monitoring at the end of every summer, and that's one of the the, the good things we get to go out and scuba dive and do seagrass trans. Um, and we are the only, uh, it's, it's a cooperative effort. Uh, um, we're not the only ones who do it. Um, DEP does it, Swift Mud does it, uh, Manatee County does it, the estuary program does it. We are the ones doing it around here, though. Pinellas County is the ones doing Clearwater Harbor, and Charlotte, or, uh, Charlotte, or uh, uh, St. Joe Sound. <laughs> and, and we, we do this. We do 14 transects every year, so we've got a good um, amount of data on the, the seagrass, at least in this area, for in, in Clearwater. And it, it's it, it has over the years. It, it's it's getting better. The seagrass is anyway. And that's what this. Um, if you guys can see the graph, um, uh, just showing the, the 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 green means it's growing. Um, the red is where it's losing. It's a uh, it's it's seagrass for very you know, who, who knows why. Um, the, the and the blue is kind of staying the same. And the other the other graph is Tampa Bay in general, just showing that it's it, it's been trending upward for quite some time. I was going to ask, do you have any imagery over time to to show where it's improved or where it's <coughs> decreased? Uh, I, I, that graph, uh, I'm, someone gave me the uh, the graph that's on here, so I don't know yeah. time scale of that particular um, GIS layer there. So right. I, I, I just know it's been going up, but I don't I don't have like a like a 1970 in the right. Right. Okay. Is the uh, like the the red that we're looking at? Is that right under the bridge? Is that the marina? Uh, I'm kind of trying to visualize. Mm -hmm. That's, that's uh, the intercoastal. That's, that's Courtney Campbell. Campbell. Oh, that's Courtney Campbell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think, it, if I remember correctly, yeah, the that area yeah. is um. Yeah, you won't get a treatment plan. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I, I think that area has a lot of um, oh, I get it. okay I'm, I'm seeing it now yeah water rushing through there so mm -hmm. it probably just as time goes off you know just kind of wipes it out and lets it come back wipes it out it probably depends on what time of year we're there sampling that makes it you know. and most of the long-term data that we have on at least water quality in, in Pinellas County is, is it's either it's either kind of stayed the same or, or, or it's been going down. Not a lot of it, not a lot of the things have been going up. We'd like a lot of them to go down more, but at least they have been staying. They kind of plateaued and stayed rough, roughly, you know, the same. Like the, the, the nitrogen levels have only been going up in a, a, a couple of places, most of the nitrogen that we're doing, and whether that's people using less fertilizer or less runoff or what it is, it's, it's, it's been going down in most places in the, in the county. And the same with the, the chlorophyll has gotten better, um, the phosphorus has gotten better, the turbidity of the water, the clarity of the water has gotten better, I, except for in a few places. There's a few places that it's just um, not, not doing what we want it to do. But. Where's that? Huh? Where is it that it's not doing what you want it to do? Well, um, it, like uh, the turbidity in a couple of places, like uh, Clearwater Harbor has went up a little bit uh, over time. It hasn't, it, it's been, uh, it's probably hard for you guys to see the, 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 the graphs on there, but they, they kind of go like, oh, you can see that. <laughs> if you can see the little arrows up and down, I, I mean, it's, oh. it's, oh, okay. the, the majority of them are, are, are going down or the blue dots mean that it hasn't really, there, there's no, uh, it's not going up or down. So at least the majority of them are going and staying stable or going in the right direction. And these are all of your, or the clear water water bodies that we actually sample on a regular basis. And that's the eight times a year and that we're at these sites. These are all all uh, streams, creeks, or, or a couple of them are lakes. And those are the, um, the, 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 the way we, the basins that we set up. Um, you guys have um, the, the, the blue parts or the open water parts of the bay that we sample. That we just, that's just the way we split them up. And this is just a kind of a a summary of, of data from 2003 to 2019 and it just shows um, the, the the creek or the lake um, and the nutrients or the turbidity or chlorophyll what they're doing and th this is kind of the same thing that was on the, the kind of the graph going up and down and staying stable well, so again the majority of them have no trend to them whatsoever um, they're kind of just stable is that good or bad well, it's not bad that it's staying stable. It's. I mean, I, I mean it could be staying stable at a bad level. I'm sorry. It could be staying stable at a bad level. Well, they're not. Most of them are not. Um, are, are well, uh, there's there's more data on here at the end of it that okay. shows what it is. But if, if it's stable and um, meeting DEP's requirements, then it's good. But if it's not meeting DEP's requirements, then. So can we assume if it's stable, it's as stable, that means it's meeting the EP requirements? Um, not necessarily. Okay. <laughs> okay, this is the, the same thing, and it, it shows um, uh, the same creeks, but it shows what it's impaired for, and its impa impairment is based on DEP's um, class three water body, you know, designation. Um, most of them are... Um, impaired for fecal coliforms or E. coli or something of that nature and there's a few of them that have too much nitrogen a few of them that the DO is is bad on but if it wasn't for the bacteria on here then it would be most of those sites would be relatively good how is all that fecal contamination getting into that those waterways um there's uh, I don't know the answer to that um, Leaking septic things. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah, I mean, it could be septic tanks. Septic tanks. I mean, there's, a, there's it also laterals, like when you have rain and things like that. Like, it's, it's the human interference of our structure is generally what... I that forgot is. about septic tanks. Yeah. I, I know we do another thing with Pinellas Park, and they actually do genetic... Um, they do it. They do it. Uh, they do our waters. We we do their water sample for them, but we also take a genetic test along with it, and that kind of they know they have bacteria in their water. They're trying to determine, hey, what kind of bacteria is this? Because this thing could tell you a regular test for E. coli. It'll tell you you have E. coli. It won't tell you if it's human or if it's from a bird or if it's from a horse, which is what they were concerned about in Pinellas Park. So you you really have to if you know something's there, you have to somehow figure out, hey, is this coming from a human or is it coming from a bird? Is there anything you can do about it, you know? Right. And DO, tell me again what DO is. The dissolved oxygen in the water. Okay. Uh, and result As a result of nutrients? Uh, probably, more than likely. I, I mean, stuff dying oxygen. off in the water causing the, the, okay. the, the lower DO readings. But most of them, you know, and, and how high they are, I don't know. You know, I don't. I don't know to tell you that these water bodies are all like skyrocketing high for um, for for bacteria. They they probably aren't because I'm sure there would be some warnings put out if they were really bad. But I I just know that they're above what DEP considers um, a, a class three water body. And that's the the numbers that are on the. Um, uh, class three from the from the DEP. Those are what they're supposed to be, and the ones that were above that are, are 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 above that level, or below that level for the dissolved oxygen. And that just tells you that um, that's class three. The the waters in Pinellas County should be class three. They should be technically fishable, swimmable, and, and if they don't meet that requirement, then they are not a, a class three water body. Is all this information publicly available? Yes. At the DEP or at the county? Uh, you should be able to get it from both, I, I, I would think. Uh, I, I know you can get it from the county, whether it ours is available sooner than DEP's probably, more than likely. It, 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 all of our data goes into WIN, which is um, DEP's database. So, so it is. I think it's available from us before it's available at, at DEP, just because it has to go to them before it goes to us. And just where you were saying where some of it comes from, a lot of it comes from non-point source pollution. It, it, it comes from runoff from roads and run off from dogs going to the bathroom in the yard, you know, it, it just, rainwater runoff, stormwater, there's not a lot of, um, there's not a lot of stopping it from going from one place to the next. It goes from the parking lot to the creek, so there's no, you know, there's no pl real, a whole lot of places for it to stop off and drop off of its nutrients, it just runs right into the creek. And some of the things that can be done about that are just, you know, street sweeping, uh, building retention things to, retention ponds and things to try to slow down the, the water before it gets to the actual creek and then makes it to the bay. Um, the not fertilizing too much, stormwater maintenance, cleaning out the, you know, stormwater catch basins and things like that, which do get done on a regular basis, but there's there's a lot you like she was saying about the trash in the other pond. There's a lot of trash that gets into the stormwater catch basins, and then if those don't get cleaned out, that stuff goes right to the the creek or the lake or the pond. And if you guys have not seen them, that's what your the the creeks all look like. Um, at least where we sample them at, that's kind of what they look like. It, there's quite a diversity between the, the, the creeks and the, and the county, actually. They all look quite a bit different from each other. And that's, that's all I have for you. <laughs> okay, great. Um, anyone? 
Let's go ahead. A couple of things I'd like to touch on. Uh, thank you for the overview. It's great and uh, understanding that we can all access the data <laughs> if we're so inclined yeah, is, yeah, is important yeah. as well. A couple of things that uh, we've talked about here uh, at past meetings uh, kind of bear on some of the, the work that you're undertaking. Uh, one of them was the seagrass monitoring. Uh, we've asked some questions about the uh, Imagine Clearwater project that we have with the amphitheater uh, attracting boat traffic out uh, you know, in the waterfront area. And you know, I did look at the Tampa Bay Estuary Program atlases some time ago, but uh, we had actually asked if uh, you know, we could undertake a uh, seagrass survey uh, at that area, and I noticed one of your sampling stations for seagrass uh, was was a little red dot okay. proximate to uh, uh, you know Coachman Park. Okay. And uh, uh, our concern is really with uh, boats coming in to get you don't have to pay <laughs> to enjoy the music. Yeah, yeah. And being able to you know anchor at that location when they pull up anchor, you're pulling up seagrass with it. And if you get a lot of boat traffic there over a period of time, you know, should there be some kind of uh, restriction to uh, anchoring, anchorage at that location. And uh, we don't have the information uh, in the condition. Uh, I know uh, some of the data that the Tampa Bay Estuary Program had indicated that that area was in decline uh, in terms of its seagrass. Uh, but, uh, if you have more recent data, I think it would be nice to uh, to have that and understand it, uh, so we could potentially advise uh, this, the city council whether you know that's something that should be pursued. Is uh, yeah, you know, is there an area that there should be you know some restrictions placed on uh, anchorage uh, in conjunction well, um, with that project? We probably have. Quite a bit of data from that. We do that every year. We don't do the same site every year, so I mean it's a random sampling of where those those dots end up being. But I, I'm sure over the years, at least we have something showing that that's either going better or, or worse. And as far as I know, I, I don't think they, not that I know of, they, they don't stop anyone from from really doing anything as far as seagrass. I mean, I, I see people out fishing; they throw their anchor right in the seagrass half the time. I know when we go out and we sample seagrass, unless there's nowhere to, to anchor besides seagrass, we look for a sandy patch and throw our anchor down. I mean, that's just what we do, you know. But sometimes there's so much seagrass. A lot of these you know, concerts are going to be at night. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're not going to look, in, be, look into the water column no. to see if they're setting the anchor in the, the sandy spot. So yeah. it's just a, a concern that we had and understanding that there's a, a resource that, that uh, yeah. deserves some protection at that location. And I don't know how much time you guys have spent out on the bay, but there's a, a lot of boaters really just don't have yeah. a lot of time. There's, there's prop scars everywhere right through the seagrass, and that stuff really does not grow back very quickly. It, if at all, sometimes it just sometimes it's disturbed and it never yeah, it, it never recovers. You know, it just stays a, a big bare spot. This is one that we have the potential to manage and control. Yeah, it yeah, is in yeah. fact an issue. Is that something they recently started letting people do, or has it always been like that? You've always well, been able to pull up there and. Yeah, there is no restriction at this point okay. in time, but we would think that, you know, with the expanded amphitheater and. Uh, uh, more attractive uh, performers coming in, yeah. that uh, you know, it's, it's gonna gonna be a regular thing on the weekends to pull up there and. Uh, yeah, boaters have done it for years already. So yeah, if there's yeah. more events to do that at, yeah, then. So, well, and you'll, you'll so you, you should definitely. I mean, if 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 if, if, you, if you contact me, I, I might not know exactly where the data is, but I I can get whoever. I can get you a GIS layer from from somebody just to you know say hey yeah this is going because nothing that we collect is as far as I know is, is hidden from anyone. It's, it's, All right, you know, we collect my, it. It's, my next one know. was uh, the uh, the problem areas for E. coli. Have you done any kind of an overlay of the unsewered locations and how they relate to uh, those portions of the watershed or sampling stations that? Um, uh, 
you know, is it truly a, uh, you know, a septic system kind of an issue? It's not really the tank, it's the performance of the system and their maintenance and... Robin, I can answer that one. So, Pinellas County does the monitoring for us and every year they give us the information to include in our MS4 permit, in our stormwater permit. So we have that information and it's up to us to take that information and do something with it. So we have um, uh, bacterial pollution control plans, like we have one for Alligator Lake and Bishop Creek. We're working on several others. And so as part of that process to come up with that plan, we look at those things. We look at where the septic tanks are. We look at where we may have lateral issues. We look at where homeless camps are likely to occur. We look at where there's bird populations, where people go and walk their dogs right next to the stream. Like we have, um, it's, it's a very lengthy process. We do a, a thing where it's called maps on the table and we get a whole bunch of different departments in and they talk about the problems that they have and where it is. And then, we go and it's uh, on the next day usually we do something called walk the Wibid and Wibid is water water basin ID is what that stands for but um, it's walk the Wibid so we will walk most places we'll have different groups and we'll walk most places within that watershed and we'll field truth a lot of those questionable areas and we'll things that were like I don't really know what's going on at the end of that street we'll walk out there and look at it and so from those, from that information and with the water quality sampling, we come up with plans on how to address it. Like, uh, for instance, in Alligator Creek, we went and had an apartment complex install some doggy bag stations along where they walked their dogs. We put up some educational signs so people would pick up after their dogs and not just let it run into the creek. And so we, we look at those very specific actions based on their data and based on looking at like that area wide and what problems we can solve and so we look at yes we don't just assume it's it's a septic tank where we we look at what's That's there re reassuring yeah <laughs> very mm -hmm. so thank you sir mm -hmm. and i guess my final one uh it seemed like the uh, most problematic location that we have uh is stevenson creek you know, clearly, probably as a consequence of the wastewater treatment plant up, upstream, and you, the notes there said, you know, there was high BOD is biochemical oxygen demand. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's basically the amount of uh, respiration oxygen that's required to break down uh, some of the uh, the nutrients and organics. Uh, you know, and you had a low DO, I guess, and high nitrogen, which is, yeah, you know, yeah. the nutrient that we're trying to, uh, you know, minimize in high chlorophyll levels. And, you know, just passing around that uh, Stevenson Creek on occasion on the Pinellas Trail and uh, some of the other streets, uh, it is fairly turbid. And, <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's a fair amount of mullet in there from what I've seen. Who, um... But... Uh, uh, you know, so it's healthy for some of the fish, but uh, you know, once that gets down into the estuary, to the saline uh, waters, uh, it does create a problem. And, uh, do you know if there are any plans, maybe Sarah, uh, to upgrade is, that is particular that plant? Clear waters, wastewater treatment. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So that's the Marshall Street plant, and I just want to preface that by saying um, that is an advanced treatment water plant. So what is coming out of that plant is very good water, um, but that plant's been there a long time, and so it wasn't always that way. So, like, one of the issues is the sediment that's in that creek is one of the issues. So we dredged it, but there's still other sediment there, um, and so that is a problem there. Another issue with that area is that neighborhood is, like, around Stevenson Creek is an older neighborhood. So it was built before... Swift mud required water quality treatment when you build roads, when you build neighborhoods, when you build anything. And so all of that runoff from those neighborhoods, from anything that was built in that area is going directly into the creek. It doesn't have water quality treatment. Like when we build a new neighborhood now, we have storm water ponds that captures everything. All those nutrients fall out in the pond and then you have much cleaner water being discharged. So 
Um, that's something with Stevenson Creek. But um, in saying that, uh, it is one of the city's priorities to do a um, BMAP, a bacterial, bacterial Management Action Plan. And so that's very similar to the bacteria control plan, except it requires a lot more water quality monitoring. So you look at what is there and try to figure out the problems, and then you try to figure out solutions for it. So bacteria, bacteria plans is usually requires more action, like you need to educate more people about certain things. And then B maps generally require much more construction. Like you generally have to build something to solve a nutrient problem. You can't just educate people as much. Like runoff, you're going to require like a basin or something to be able to catch that runoff. And so um, it requires a little bit more effort to do um, that type of report. Um, and so uh, it's taken a little bit longer. But that's something that the city is currently working on um, for Stevenson Creek. Yeah, years ago there was a dredging project there, and I yep. think there were a lot of issues with that. Is that something that would the city look to do another project like that, or did that project no? No. Uh, that project, uh, the Corps of Engineers did. It was greatly delayed. It was, um, they, they removed a lot of sediment, and uh, the city would not do that again. Um, there's a lot of other things that we could do. Um, I think that project, like, um, John mentioned there's mullet there now. Mm -hmm. I think that has helped bring them back because there weren't any fish there for, for many years. And that project helped with the hydration, like hydrology mm -hmm. a lot. Like water is able to come back into the creek a lot better. Before, on a regular basis, you could walk all the way across the creek daily. And now, usually, there's water in it. Um, and so... That's, that's helped a lot with that. But uh, we know there's still problems. We know there's still nutrient problems. And so that is on the city's radar to, to work on the study to, to figure out what we can do to make improvements to that. And I do know, to your point about septic tanks in the area, that is an area mm -hmm. that is largely yep. in septic tank use, mm -hmm. or has been for many years. So Yes. I have a question. So I just want to make sure I understand the flow um, correctly. You guys collect data, you feed that data to the city, and the city develops an action plan. Yes. Okay. But you don't take action. You just collect. Um, it, as far as I know, the county just gives you guys the data. They give us the data. Like, if yeah. they're out and they see something that is like an active issue, yeah. they'll let us know and, you know, we'll work together to, to deal with an issue. But um, as far as like their big report that says how the water bodies are doing, they just give that to us and we, we take the action on it. Mm -hmm. And I had a question, I don't know if Robert or Sarah you can answer. Oh, the standards that are the um, water's tested to, have those changed over time or are those have those been consistent? I, I worked for DEP before I came here. Um, and they, I, I believe they've been the same for a while. They might have reworked them a little bit. I know they did for this area for phosphorus because this area has higher natural phosphorus. So our thing is actually a little bit higher than the rest of the state okay. just because of the natural phosphorus leaching from the ground. Okay. Here. It's not necessarily, so, so they took a little bit of that away because of the, well, that's why they mine phosphorus. You know, right. Phosphate around here, yeah, because you know, it's 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 rich in that. So I know that's the only one that's. I think that's the only one that's different as far as um their 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 that's changed their numbers. Years. Okay. But it, it's been the same for quite a while. I know there was a big fight when I was at DEP between EPA and DEP because mm -hmm. EPA wanted these numbers, and Florida said, "Well, we can't possibly meet those numbers. Your numbers are too stringent, or whatever they were fighting over." You know, okay. that, that that's it's been that way for a while, and I don't think they've really changed them much at all. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Anyone else have any questions? Any questions from the audience? All right. Okay, great. Thank you very thank much you. for your presentation. Thank you thank for your time, you. Robin. All right. We'll move on to our next item, an update on sustainability programs by Sheridan Boyle, the city sustainability coordinator. Come on down. Thank you. So, yeah, Sheridan Boyle, sustainability coordinator. So there are, I think, two things. I'll probably just... Um, Cover, we had a fun event on Saturday, so at the end, I'll just give a debriefing on how that went. So the first thing I wanted to provide an update on is we are currently in the 
final draft revisions of a green fleet policy. Um, we have been putting it together over the last couple of months and we're right now um, meeting with different department heads that have a large number of vehicles um, to get feedback, thoughts, um, and walk them through what that policy looks like. So right now, um, it's still tentative and it's still in its draft version, but right now that policy sets a goal of, um, for light duty vehicles, 100% of our light duty vehicles will be alternatively fueled by 2040, and to help that goal be reached, by 2027, the policy currently states um, we will no longer purchase new internal combustion vehicles for light duty vehicles. So um, the policy is pretty long. Um, it definitely doesn't just say that. We want to make sure that we're providing enough guidelines, guidelines and helping departments reach that goal. So um, it basically sets up a hierarchy of vehicle type with all electric being a priority, um, electric hybrid being second, gas hybrid being third, um, actually, I'm sorry, I spoke wrong, vehicle sharing is top because we don't necessarily want to buy vehicles if they're seldomly used. So vehicle sharing is up top, followed by all electric, followed by electric hybrid, gas hybrid, and then natural gas before considering internal combustion vehicles. Um, in this policy, it sets that a green fleet committee will be put together by the sustainability coordinator, the fleet manager, and the budget manager and that we will help each department create their own plan for how they're going to make this transition happen. A big component of that, which we will need to develop further, is going to be figuring out um, how many and where our electric vehicle charging stations need to be um, so that we can plan for the near future transition of certain vehicles and the long term transition. So that's currently coming up. Does anyone have questions on that policy? The light duty vehicles include. Yes. Do those include like uh, police vehicles, police cars? So I'll give you the definition that we are using for that. Um, basically, light duty refers to a sedan, SUV, van, or a half ton truck, which is primarily used by departments to transport <coughs> passengers and cargo. So anything smaller than a half ton truck. Any questions on that? Okay. It's still, you know, it's going to set a goal and a direction. We definitely will have to follow it through with a, a number of plans, uh, both with the supporting infrastructure and just to make sure that we're right-sizing our vehicles in addition to using alternative fuels. Um, so the second update I wanted, I know it was requested to give an update on solar. A number of conversations still are happening um, from the last time I presented at a meeting. Uh, specifically our fire station 46, fire station 47, our police substation 3, and our air park. Um, conversations regarding solar on those new or updated facilities is still happening. Um, the substation 3 um, will be coming up to council soon. And then we also have formed an internal group to discuss solar moving forward. Uh, we want to make sure both on new facilities and current facilities that could possibly be retrofitted to incorporate solar. We want to make sure we have a cohesive, comprehensive approach rather than just, you know, kind of seeing what, seeing what works. So the idea is that we are possibly going to talk with a few firms to get an idea of what does a citywide solar feasibility study look like um, and, and to see if that's something that we want to consider specifically for our existing facilities, meaning identifying the buildings that are the best candidates, um, as well as how to determine benchmarks for evaluating solar bids in the future. So right, it, like what's an appropriate price per watt, what's an appropriate size, what's an appropriate length of return on investment. So that's what this group is currently uh, meeting uh, to discuss. So you have several com companies that you're talking to right now? Um. We, it's, it's informal, um, and so we are with four firms that we're going to be uh, working with our procurement people um, to just um, get an informal presentation on, you know, this is what we're hoping to do, what would that look like for us? Are there firms that have uh, done this kind of work across the country? You know, yeah. municipal buildings uh, in, in industrial? I can't say across the country, but certainly that we have seen in the area. Okay. And 
and there were four that were selected because of that. All right. Any other questions on that? Awesome. So the last one is we had a really great uh, celebration of Earth Day at Moccasin Lake Nature Park last Saturday. We wanted to switch it up, and so we did an um, invasive species scavenger hunt. So it was fun, but we also wanted people to be better capable of identifying so many of the invasive species that plague Florida and this area so that when they're on their own property or the neighbor's property, they can know what they should either be pulling up or what they shouldn't be planting. And so it was a really great event. We had a good turnout. Um, we did have people um, RSVP in advance just because we didn't want too many people showing up all at once still to be mindful of the pandemic. And um, people from all different age groups, families with kids, folks in their 20s, 30s, and then um, some older folks as well. And it was great to see that I think uh, four or five people came up and said it was the first time that they had ever been in the park, which definitely made me happy to know that because it's a jewel. Um, and in addition to the, the scavenger hunt, we had folks from the Florida Native Plant Society there. Um, we had different representatives from the city to talk about some of our programs, and then the Clearwater Audubon chapter also brought out some of the uh, birds of prey, and so people got to be introduced to certain birds that they might not commonly see. Um, I did want to mention too, uh, I think we have a really great volunteer specialist, Sam, who's doing a number of cleanup events. Um, and Jared, I, I know I heard uh, Crest Lake Park is opening soon to the public and it's going to be really great and they're doing a cleanup next Saturday. Oh, they uh, will be doing one there. Or oh. this Saturday. Oh, in okay, preparation great. Of that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I think I might have that on my list of events yep. here. Yeah. Is Moccasin Lake doing, I've heard the 24th for Moccasin Lake as well. Yeah, so that's, I believe, an, in, mm -hmm. uh, an invasive species removal. So okay. there's, there's events just go happening left and right, right, which is amazing. Earth Week. Yeah. Um, but even into the future, I also know that they're doing a cleanup of Stevenson Creek soon, too. So. Okay. Um, anyone have any? I had a couple of quick questions. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it, it falls under the things you mentioned. I'm curious, um, are you aware or do you know about the Duke Energy Clean Energy Connection yeah. program? Is that something that... We are enrolled in that. Okay. Yeah, so I believe, um, I think 40% of our... City facilities electricity is enrolled in that program. Okay. All right. And then also, um, as far as natural gas is concerned with green print and, and everything, I, I saw this and I thought the number was really low, but it said that there's 26,000 natural gas customers throughout the city or residential customers. And I thought that seemed really low. Is there any idea that we'd want to increase that to help proliferate the use of natural gas or is it just a natural like just however whenever people want to yeah, sign up for I it? I can't speak as well to that just because I'm not in the natural gas department so I don't under I don't know what might be the limitations for expanding services to certain neighborhoods. Um, is that something that's addressed in Greenprint though? So the next update of Greenprint hasn't yet come before council to be approved. Um, the first Greenprint called for a natural gas expansion as a strategy um, the current draft of green print does have natural gas as a strategy. It focuses more on also promoting efficient use of natural gas rather than solely expansion. Okay. So making sure that customers are also provided with information on how they can um, conserve their use of natural gas as well. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. When, does, uh, when is, the, is the green print 2.0 yeah. Expected out. Thank you for asking. So our consultants needed a little more time, so we expect to have it to council in July. July. Yeah. And so we're currently doing, if anyone uh, has some last minute photos that they want to submit, we're currently doing a call for photos um, so that people can submit their own personal photos that they've taken within Clearwater in the last five years. Something that, you know, deals with Clearwater's environments, communities, uh, vehicles, and so on. Um, and if they want to submit that, we are going to have a panel next week review and select photos for the new green print. Update. Is the de deadline still Friday for that? Deadline is still Friday, yeah. Okay. This Friday? Mm -hmm. Two days. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's most of that one. Did you have any other questions on it? Well, I guess since we've talked about septic tanks too, does green print, to, does it mention anything about moving from septic tank to, or, or pushing for more? There is a line, and it was in the first green print as well, um, that just says, like, as we move to connect uh, septic tank properties into the sewer system, we'll see um, our emissions decrease mm -hmm. from our water. Um, there's a, from our water processing, 
and our water, just like component of our greenhouse gas inventory. Um, as of now, when you look at our entire greenhouse gas inventory, um, water is probably the smallest component of emissions, but it's amazing when you even, if you, if you take everything out and you just look at emissions that come from the processing of water, um, septic tanks have a lot to do with our emissions. Mm -hmm. And so even since 2007, the levels that have decreased since then um, has really changed and reduced our emissions in that water category. Okay. Are there any recommendations in, in uh, like green space um, uh, percentages of maintaining or land, you know, land conservation? Actually, it, I'm just thinking in terms of, you know, uh, keeping maybe a certain percentage of our land in Clearwater as green space. Is there any goals? It doesn't talk about a percentage of land. It does talk about um, having specifically with like a tree canopy target. So while it might not be a percentage of like land and green space, um, it does direct that the city look at its tree canopy and see where it might be lacking in certain areas as well as set a goal um, for increasing tree canopy. Um, it does also call for a, like a pilot program carbon sequestration project. Okay. So meaning like you would take trees and plant them intensely in a certain area and try and calculate the amount of carbon that you're sequestering. So not only reducing our emissions by actively preventing like certain behaviors, but also actively taking in carbon back into the ground and trying to calculate it. Is there a section like on smart growth in terms of how we should grow from here as developed as developed out as we are now? In terms of buildings, heights, buildings, you know, or I guess I'm just talking. I should look back, look at you know the, the original green print and see what that. But there was land suggestions for use of land. Yeah, it talks about like a mixed use, you know, for neighborhoods and communities to make sure that we're not driving long distances just to get to work or just to get to school or just to get to the grocery store. It talks about um, creating complete streets so that our streets are um, friendly to, to things other than just sole passenger vehicles, to so things like public transportation, bikes and pedestrians. Um, so I think it mostly concentrates on like streets and the way that our, our urban centers are designed rather than like building heights. Transportation, mass transit, any uh, goals down that line? Yeah, it's um, in the first green print plan, I mean, a lot has happened since 2007, so we provide a lot of updates, but a lot of it is to continue supporting the um, PSDA. Similar goals. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Any um, comments from anyone from the audience or questions? All right. Thank you very much, Sheridan. All right, we'll move on to our next item, item 4.3, discuss Springfield trip schedule to Crest Lake Park. So Crest Lake Park is done, and so it's an easy field trip for you guys to go see all the things that's there, the new Arboretum, um, the new uh, rain gardens that they've put in, um, so some really great improvements that they have to Crest Lake Park. So. Um, is that something that you guys would like to do? We can have um, a tour guide um, from parks to go through and show us like the specific improvements that they've done to to those things. Yeah, speaking for myself. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I walked out there today with one of the dogs, and it was a beautiful experience. It's a great looking park. The rain gardens were really cool. I wanted to you know, <clears throat> bring that up too, because it's uh, something that I think moving forward with uh, construction, something that could be, you know, used to, you know, in other developments, uh, aside from just in a park. Mm -hmm. so. Um, so as far as a date, um, we could do, like, we could stick with a third Wednesday in May, like the 19th. I'm out of town in May. Okay. But, you know, I can, if everybody else can do it. Yeah. It's a Wednesday. Okay. Uh, do we want to do 4 o'clock then? Yeah. Okay. That'd be okay. Okay. Wednesday, May 19th? Yep. All right. I will set that up. I'll send out an email. Um, and 
so we'll we'll plan on doing that. Unless Glenna, do you want to be there? We could we could accommodate we could accommodate your schedule. Yeah. yeah I'm gone the entire month of May. Well, Crest Lake isn't going to change that much in the two weeks between mid-May and beginning of June. I'll be back uh, May 27th. Why don't we do it when we could all be there? That's fine. I just say if it's going to be in June, 4 p.m. might be a little hot to mm -hmm. be out there. First and week in June? I'm no longer here in June. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's heading north. So. Well, between May 27th and June 1st, that's Memorial Day weekend. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. When are you leaving? Twenty third of May. Twenty third of May, you're you're going up north. Okay. Eek. Okay. Yeah, it's looking like be more comfortable in May. Hopefully, Mark will be well to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. We don't know if Mark would be able to make it then in. Mm -hmm. At May nineteenth, either. So. And actually, I have something in St. Pete at six o'clock on May nineteenth. Okay. If you have another date suggestion, we can always change it. I can always investigate on my own. Okay. I'm, I'm fine to do that. When do you leave in May, Glenna? May fifth, sixth, third, first Thursday in May is when I leave. Okay, the sixth. 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 So, would the 5th be too soon? The 5th wouldn't work. I've got a meeting at night that I'm chairing. Okay. Um, yeah, probably wouldn't work. Okay. The 4th? Yeah, Tuesday, um, is that Okay, fourth? so that doesn't work for me. Um, what about next week? What about the 28th? Yeah. Sure enough. Is that enough time for, because our meeting, because it's supposed to have enough time for the public oh, to know, right. for notice? A week just notice. Put out notice as soon as possible. So okay. If it's set tonight as soon as possible would be tomorrow. So it could okay. be okay. So it would okay. okay. Um, that's next, next Wednesday. Yeah. Twenty eighth. Twenty eighth. Yeah. I have something in St. Pete at six, but I'll just leave at five so I can do that. Yeah, we're only going to okay. be so meandering through the we'll park. We'll do so. four p.m. next okay. week on the twenty eighth. Okay. What do you recommend as a meeting location there? I don't know. Um, and so, uh, let actually, let's say the Veterans Memorial parking lot. Yeah, I was going to say there's a like that corner there. Let's do that. Um, I'm not sure what that corner is. I'll put it in the email, yeah. but it'll be on that corner of Gulf to Bay. It's the southeast corner. And yeah. I'll say what that street name is, but... Yeah. Let's meet in that parking lot there. It's hard to miss. There's a bunch of flags. Yeah, it's where the flag See all the flag Excellent. poles. Excellent. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, uh, all right. That, oh, sorry. That's, that's it. Okay. I'll say I was out there today, and there were a lot of trash cans. Mark would be very pleased to see how many <laughs> trash cans there are. But uh, he would also not be very pleased. There was a lot of trash already out there. So I'm glad to hear that there's a cleanup plan for this weekend. But, you know, it just goes to show that no matter how mu much infrastructure you provide or facilities, or trash cans, people are still going to just throw things on the ground. I mean, there was trash a foot from trash cans, you know, so... <laughs> It, it, it's, it was remarkable um, and sad, too, to see that because <clears throat> these are brand new. These cans are not full. There's no reason why they shouldn't have trash in them instead of around them, except for people not using them properly. So I don't know if, you know, there's an educational component to using trash cans. Uh, I, I mean, there is, obviously, but uh, I just wanted to remark. I was out there today, and it was really beautiful, except, you know, and I noticed notice that so I was oh, I'd love to have a recycling cans in addition in the parks but I know that Parks and Rec has to pick, fix them up and not solid waste and there's a yeah it was tough I did there. find a plastic bottle that I threw into the trash because there isn't a recycling but I know that, that that's not really a option anyway so I wish but, there was yeah yeah certainly and then yeah the Arboretum there the 
it was it was a really nice diversity of trees and the cuts on the trees that were there the pruning it looked it looked really great the you know the the the, the trees I I will say though there were date palms out there that I just uh, scourge I do not like you know they they're very expensive the upkeep for them is astronomical and uh, you, you, but there were a lot of, you know, more native uh, sable and, you know, palms and things like that. So um, I look forward to when we go, can all go out there and check it out together. And hopefully the bathrooms will be open as well then because they were still locked today too. So and are there any other questions for, about this from the audience? Because I think we still have to at least ask that. No? All right. Uh, we'll move on to the next item. It is old business. Uh, or do we, or should we discuss the letter before we do old business? Let's bu do the old business okay. first, and then you can discuss the letter. All right. Uh, discuss Environmental Advisory Board Council discussion items by board members. So that was something uh, Glenna brought up. Like, she mentioned um, the frequency of meetings. You wanted to discuss that again? Because mm -hmm. um, we had said four meetings per year, and you wanted to bring up the every other month to have that. Yeah, I'm, I'm still, I know, you know, we're, we're probably sick of this, and we really need need Mark here for this sure. discussion because um, I, what I would suggest is, again, it's been brought up before, but we've got a new, you know, configure new members. Uh, if, if we could consider uh, bi-monthly meetings um, and meet at 5 o'clock. So, you know, like Mark and, and folks who work wouldn't have to... Uh, take as much time off. Um, it's just a thought, but I don't know that we can really, I think we need to have Mark with this for this discussion. Okay. Just for minutes, I'm on board with that. It's, it's too, there's, we lose continuity. It's hard to accomplish anything when it's so broken up. So we'd be meeting six times a year right. with two trips aside from that? We can choose the, or we wouldn't you know, the, the, the trips, we can choose that as, make that choice, but there's just, I mean, issues like uh, the landing, green print. It's turning out now that green print's not going to be out till um, July. Mm -hmm. But um, but we've got other other you know uh, things going on with the comprehensive plan, the uh, strategic plan. Um, really like to see us have input and review these things as they're going on instead of you know looking at them um, at the last minute and. Uh, and weighing in or having influence, it just seems like there is enough business um, to meet that often. My thought would be that uh, being an environmental committee, we should be out looking in, at issues in the environment. I think hands-on uh, uh, is very important to seeing some of these projects, uh, you know, areas, and. Uh, I mean, the presentations we get here are great, but uh, uh, I would uh, recommend we do four field trips and have four sit-down <laughs> meetings okay. here. Uh, I think that uh, if we're going to try to do, you know, eight meetings a year, uh, that I would be more inclined to do it out in the field. And maybe there's, you know, two stops, you know, that we make and not just, you know, one particular site because you know, there's just so many things happening, you know, in the city uh, that are exciting and, you know, I think of interest to us that, uh, you know, we miss. Uh, and a lot of these you just can't go out and see on your own. Uh, right. You know, you need to have somebody basically holding your hand and giving you the tour. Sure. But are we missing them because we're not meeting enough, or are we missing them because our board is not is being left out at, because of where our board is? Our board is in the stormwater department. Our board isn't part of other groups that would be at the table, so to speak, during the planning part. So we're an afterthought already because of where we, where we are departmentally. So that's that's what that's something I think if we're having this discussion that's something that we need to also keep in mind that yeah there is a lot to going on but are we going to still be getting are we going to still are we are we going to have access to that if we're just because we're meeting more or is it because of good question I'm not sure so I looked um, like in Dunedin the Committee on Environmental Quality they have 11 members they have two alternates. 
um, and they serve two three-year terms, and there's city sustainability coordinators are the liaison for their board. They have five current vacancies, so, you know, they meet every month as well, but they also oh, okay. don't have a full board, <clears throat> you know. Um, <clears throat> they meet at 8 a.m. the last Tuesday, so in terms of we've talked about meeting frequency and times, I don't know that 8 a.m. is any more accessible than 4 p.m., so... Um, that's just, that's how Dunedin does it in, in St. Pete, their health, energy, resiliency, and sustainability committee, that's members of their city council. So those are people who are paid. They're not volunteers who okay. meet. And they meet with their sustainability coordinator as well. Um, in Largo, they, I don't, I did not see that they have an advisory or volunteer board that meets with anyone, um, or sustainability coordinator, but in St. Pete and Dunedin, that's how, that's the, that's the makeup of how their boards are and, and kind of the consistency. So again, like I said, if we're talking about, you know, we're having a holistic discussion about our board and meeting and, and frequency and things like that, we should also consider, you know, those aspects as well. Sure. So. Well, what's the next step from there then? <coughs> if, if, if we're, I'm kind of getting the impression that we feel like we should be underneath the um, sustainability yeah, I, I, I don't know if that's, I think Sheridan has left the building, but yeah, I just, like I said, like, you know, if, is some of this stuff, is it because we're not thought about because, oh, this is a project that doesn't really include stormwater because there's not a big stormwater component, but our board has an environmental focus. Our board's focus isn't necessarily right. specifically on right. only stormwater. It hasn't been for many, many years. Absolutely. So, um, so sorry. Um, Let's, so you guys think about what you want your discussion to be. Mm -hmm. Send me your agenda item for this, and we will put it on the agenda next time to talk about so you can get your ideas out. Um, yeah, and we should definitely have Mark included. And for, that way for that Mark as well. can be included yeah. in the discussion on this. Yes. Yeah. So, Sarah, how would it work if we did just agree that we wanted to go under sustainability would council have to approve that would we yeah council that? you would have to request that change from council and they would have to make that change and well, kind of like about what kind of kind of like what time frame are we talking about is this a month long endeavor um does it take a while to get on council's agenda it it does take a little while to get on the agenda so uh i would say this would be a discussion item for July, and then I would say you would finalize your recommendations at the October meeting, and then you're doing your presentation at the November mm -hmm. meeting, and that's where I would say you you okay. have your your plan of what you want changed, and it's presented at your November presentation to the council. Okay, thanks. Okay, yeah, we can develop a framework. And that would be, uh, I mean, the other, uh, if we want to change frequency of meetings or. Uh, I would say that could be included in that discussion. Yeah. That would be a yeah. council. Uh, that would be a council change. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, any other comments or questions? I guess the only question is: Could be our meeting? Could we have an outing instead of a meeting? Like, even if we had just meetings that were set, I guess I don't know if that we could do that. If like we could say, okay, this for our June meeting, we're gonna visit like Bellevue and speak to their folks I don't know if that's I don't know if that's I don't know if that's possible it might be okay. it might be just like you have a set meeting schedule and then the location each time is to be determined whether it's here or someplace else I don't know um, I can ask um, the clerk if that's possible um, but yeah like decide what you want your agenda item to me to be and what you want discussed um, and then send that to me, and I'll I'll put it in the agenda for next time. Okay. So yeah, that sort of thing. That out if there's mm -hmm. that kind of flexibility, because that might achieve what you know both of uh, both of our thoughts. Because uh, yeah, I agree about going out into the field. Mm -hmm. That I think like there's not a real concept about what the Lake Bellevue people are thinking about or wanting if we are not out there to see it. Sure. Um, any other any comments from the audience? Oh, please come forward and state your name. Hello, my name is Valerie Ingram Hinckley, and uh, I live in the Lake Bellevue area. 
Um, my uh, other residents were here earlier to speak with y'all. Yes. And uh, they mentioned that y'all were going to work on a letter. Oh yeah, we'll do oh, that. Yeah. We'll do that next. I was trying to see if anyone had any comments on uh, this specific item. What we're I discussing. Do want to oh okay, okay, very well. Thank you. I okay. think that. Uh, since you are an environmental board, yes. that you do need to go out to the parks, to the creeks, to the areas that you're representing, which is our city environment, and to, you know, the city um, officials and the city workers, like one of you commented, it's wonderful they can give you that information, but that hands-on, truly, I think would, would really uh, benefit the board to you know, have more field trips, to go out there. When you go to Crest Lake Park and you see how be beautiful it is, you know, look at how much was invested and put into that p park, and then look at the surrounding parks around it. Mm -hmm. Is that attention to detail and is that care going to go into the other parks? And if so, great. If not, why not? So. You as the Environmental Advisory Board, many people can't, you know, you're discussing, you know, when's a good time for you all to meet. What I find interesting is a lot of the boards with the city meet in the middle of the week, in the middle of the day, when average people can't get there. So if you do plan field trips, maybe let the public know, we're going to be in this park on this date. What issues in this environment area do you want us to discuss? I think that that would be a good idea. Okay. Thank so, you very much. That was my comment. Thank you very Thank much. You. Anyone else from the public? All right. Thank you very much. All right. So we'll, uh, I guess, put some more thought into this and discuss mm -hmm. some more in July and, uh, yeah, hopefully with our full board as well. Um, okay. We'll move on to our next item, which will be our letter of support for the efforts of the Lake Bellevue neighborhood. Um, I think it can almost be as simple as saying that. Um, the, um, yeah, I agree. The, there's a, uh, a lot of their own language here that we can, we can use in terms of supporting the 30-acre natural resource um, and restoring it. So, um, yeah. I jotted a couple of thoughts. Okay, I can just great. kind of read it. Uh, it's pretty rough. <laughs> but, uh, the EAB received comments from the Bellevue Neighborhood Association about the uh, current condition and opportunities uh, potentially afforded by Lake Bellevue. EAB recommends the City Council direct staff to investigate capitalizing on this underutilized natural and community resource, a comprehensive lake management plan that addresses water quality, maintenance, recreational opportunities that would benefit the community for future generations would be uh, a great asset to the city of Clearwater. You just came up with that just now. Just right off. Right. Sounds good. <laughs> Something like I that. I support that. Um, if Valerie, um, I don't know, we'll have her come up as well to make sure that it's uh, representative of what um, mm -hmm. support for the, the neighborhood we're trying to show support for and make sure that it... Thank you. <laughs> I think that sounded very good. Um, just so you all know, the petition is going to be presented to the mayor tomorrow at 4 o'clock. So this is extremely timely uh, for you all to be able to put together a letter to um, bolster our case to the city. Um, I can't help but ask, um, you, you, when you all were talking about the creeks and that there's no little to no water treatment related to the creeks, this is a 30-acre spring-fed lake that I don't know if there is water filtration for all the runoff that is coming from the streets. Mm -hmm. That may be something that the EAB might ask, you know, you know, should, 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 
basketball, perhaps? Yeah, I think it, um, John mentions a comprehensive plan for that, for management, for their, that, which would include that aspect okay. for it, um, right? Because that, yeah. that's a lot of the problem is, is the yeah. runoff, um, making sure that, as you mentioned at Crest Lake, there's an abundance of garbage cans, but people can't seem to find them. You know, um, encouraging the city to uh, supply more garbage cans, um, maybe the doggy poop bags, which are helpful. Little things like that, mm -hmm. which will help not only the lake, but the park that surrounds it. So to look at the environmental aspects of the little things that will make a big difference in that lake. And I don't know if my um, colleagues were able to mention to you all that we do have um, a team that's doing the Florida Lake Watch. Yes. So they're going to be eventually doing the water quality checks there, uh, just so you know that. And are, are there any questions for me? Um, I don't have any right now. Does anyone? Your colleagues gave us a We asked a lot of questions before. Yeah, Excellent. Presentation earlier. Excellent. So we're glad that you're here to help us put together this letter in support of your efforts as well. Um, and I think if that is amenable for everyone, it sounds like this letter, the language of it works for what you guys are trying to accomplish as well. Yes. Um, I'll make a motion to pass our, our letter of support as John has it written, and then we can put that together to then send to city council as well. Yep, you can, okay. yeah, as the as the chair, Jared, if you want to write that up, and then you can send it to, um, let me clarify who you send it to. Okay. Um, I'll talk to, to Rose tomorrow about how to, like, how you send it to them, and then you'll just send it as okay. the chair. Okay. Okay. I'll second. Is that a motion on the floor? Did you just make a motion? Uh, yeah, I motioned to <laughs> to draft Sorry, and I write and send our letter as uh, John has so eloquently already written and drafted as written Mr. and Chair, said, I have so. a procedural question, and yes. I'm just I'm not familiar yeah. with your rules and procedures. Okay. Is the chair allowed to make a motion on this board? That's sure. a good question. Oh, okay, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. All right. All right. <laughs> I wrote the, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just I did, yeah. considered that the motion. Yeah. Uh, All right. That I've made the motion All right. uh, Thank to you. accept the cryptic letter okay. <laughs> <laughs> that I dealt with. All right. All right. Second. Thank you. Um, All right. <laughs> we take a vote. We need a vote on that. Oh, we have a second. So, yeah, yeah, all approve? Approve. approve? Yeah. Okay. Yes. yes. All approve. Okay. So, motion moves. Um, we'll have this letter sent and put together for you then. Can we get, out, get, it, get it out tomorrow to yeah. kind of accompany their petition? So, it will go out tomorrow? Yes. Can you read it for me one more time? Please. It won't be the same. <laughs> I mean, we have a draft right now. Do we? It's. it's yeah. Can we, can, in the works can we send it to them, the HOA? Actually, I'd like to hear it again, too, if we could, please. Okay. All right. I'll try to make some of the same changes on <laughs> like these rough notes. The Environmental Advisory Board received comments from the Bellevue Neighborhood Association about the condition and opportunities potentially afforded by Lake Bellevue. It would be the Lake Bellevue Neighborhood Association. That's the name of Lake, Lake Bellevue, Bellevue Neighborhood Association. Yeah, the Lake Bellevue. Okay. The EAB recommends the City Council direct staff to investigate how the city may capitalize on this underutilized natural and community resource. A comprehensive lake management plan that addresses water quality, maintenance, and recreation opportunities that would benefit the community and future generations of the residents of Clearwater uh, to enjoy um, would be achieved by uh, your support for this uh, natural Can resource. Can I add Something one more thing in there? What's that? Can we include support of the group? Not just the port of the lake, but that the city council support the endeavors of this group. Fine with me. 
Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Okay. I, noted that, I noted that here, too. We appreciate it. Okay. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. <laughs> All right, very well. I'll try it, yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's, looks more legible than my notes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. uh, very well. Um, okay, we'll move on, I guess, to our next item, which would be the director's report. Uh, so Jared had emailed me, and he just wanted um, a quick summary of the Piney Point situation down in Manatee County. Uh, so Piney Point uh, was a phosphate processing plant that was built in the 1960s. Um, and it's, it's no longer operating, but the storage ponds are still there. Um, and so in late March, a leak was discovered in one of the uh, processed water ponds. And um, DEP authorized a release of, this is, this is their authorized release of uh, 480 million gallons of this wastewater into the port of Manatee, and that was to avoid um, a more catastrophic release of the wastewater. So um, they released less than that. It was just over 200 million gallons, so they didn't release all that they had been approved to release, but it's still a lot of wastewater. Uh, so they're no longer releasing the water. Um, but they are doing a lot of environmental monitoring. Um, so uh, the Tampa Bay Estuary Program has an, like a dashboard that has all of the monitoring on it. So it has water quality, algae, seagrass, um, benthic, and then also contaminants are all being monitored. And it's, um, it, it's not real time, but it's probably as close as you can get to it. It's, you know, two days off of what the sampling is. So it's really, really um, current as to what's going on out there. So you can really see what that is. Um, on the website too, oh, I can't remember if it's on that website, uh, but uh, USF is doing um, like a currents study and looking at where the currents are sort of moving the contaminants and they're not moving very far. They're pretty much staying just kind of in that area and just sort of shifting to the north and south a little bit. Um, but there's um, that you can see. It, I think it might, I, can't, I think I found it on that website as well. Um, so something that they're planning on doing is um, putting these the water that are in that's in these pools in a deep well injection and so that will go into the ground and um, that is something that will go underneath the Florida aquifer so it will go underneath where we get our drinking water so it's not going so there's going to be a containment layer between where those contaminants are and where our drinking water is and I just want to like when I when I heard that I was like oh gosh but that application to, to do that has been in the works for about three years. So it's, it's not just like, oh my gosh, there's a problem and this is the solution that we just came up with. They've been planning on this for a while. So DEP has been reviewing this and deciding how to, how to move forward with this. So um, it's, not, it's not just an instant knee-jerk reaction. It's, um, it's something that they've been working on for a while. Because that's going to take long time. I mean, how, I mean, it's going to take time to build, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's, I mean, I don't know how deep it needs to be, but I mean, our, our production wells are really deep, like our water production wells. And, and so I can't even imagine how deep it needs to go to get below that. So, um, yeah, so they'll, I'm, there will be tons more to talk about as far as that goes, but that's kind of what the current status of, of that situation is. So I just wanted to mention as part of that discussion, according to the Tampa Bay Times, they were warned about this years ago, they, and our U.S. Army Corps of Engineers warned that this is the worst case scenario and they could see it coming years ahead of time, which puts into question in my mind the role of you know, boards such as ours. I mean, how do you prevent something like this from happening in your own backyard? I mean, the Port of Manatee made a business decision, a poor one as it turns out, for the environment. Mm -hmm. But how can we as citizens 
watch guard this and prevent these kind of things or at least talk about them and protest them. And this whole idea of containment below, I mean, we see that their containment systems haven't worked before. So that if they're going to contain it where it could filter up to our drinking water, maybe that's not such a good idea either. So it's a, you know, with boards like this and involved citizens, I think, are really the only recourse. <coughs> Yeah, even so, that was a private facility on private property, so, you know. But they still have to answer to federal and sure, city and county sure, agencies. Sure, um, Yeah, thank you for looking at that. I, I also, I was also curious because in the past we've had algae blooms, and, mm -hmm. and um, I was curious as to how if tidally, it seems like Tampa, the, the way the bay tides work kind of saved us a bit from the worst <coughs> of it in the past, so... Yeah, we'll see what happens this summer as it gets warmer. Like what, yeah. I, I mean, there's already kind of a red tide in, um, you know, farther south, as there always is, seems like. There's always mm -hmm. that bacteria that's down there, um, or algae that's down there. So, like, it'll be interesting to see how this impacts things. Um, hopefully the currents will stay, you know, kind of as they are, and it won't push anything farther up here because, as we know, we often have blooms right around the Courtney Campbell Causeway. Um, so hopefully that will not impact us up here. So, so it's not, it's, but you're saying it's not, USF study shows that it's not moving much. Just it just sort of out floats today. and it's, it, it's kind of sort of staying right around Port Manatee. And I mean, it's, it's not moving a ton. It's not going across to St. Pete. It's not going underneath the, the bridge, it's kind of just hugging the coast right there is, no. is what it's doing. <clears throat> so um, we'll, we'll see as the weather changes, as we get storms, all of that kind of stuff. When we get into the rainy season, um, it's very close to the Little Manatee River and, Manatee, and the Manatee River. And so as we get more runoff, we get the storms, there's going to be a lot more water in those rivers. So it'll be interesting to see how that water mm -hmm pushes it, um, and so, but they're monitoring it, so we're just, keep our eyes peeled on that situation. All right, any other questions, comments? Okay, um, thank you very much. Oh, uh, oh yes, yeah. so the other thing is, um, so you don't need to make your decisions now, um, but I will send out an email um, in the next while. Um, about agenda items so we already know one so if you guys can think about what you want to discuss so I can put that in our in our agenda item in our notes to make sure that we're getting everything covered um, yeah so okay. if there's anything in particular let me know now or I can just email you guys later okay thank you very much anything now green print hopefully we'll be up by, oh, out by the third week July. Mm -hmm. Okay. All That's right. all me. All right. Um, we'll go to our next item, board members to be heard. Marita? I think I've said my piece tonight. Thank okay. <laughs> Glenna? Um, okay. I'm, <clears throat> see, yeah, I just have, um, I just want to mention about like green print that um, that there are you know I don't know I thought it was coming out in June and um, but I would like it maybe in July if it's out uh, that we would have a chance to review it and um, <clears throat> see if we can't uh, support it um, particularly maybe some of the uh, bolder goals um, that uh, Sheridan was talking about tonight that you know if it, I would see this body uh, as, as uh, having a purpose in doing that um, and supporting Sheridan in that. Uh, the other, other thing is the, the strategic plan, the comprehensive plans that are coming up, that the strategic plan it would really, uh, I think, um, it, <clears throat> would, it would behoove us to, uh, to re also review and be a part of that process because I would like to see us um, have a, a, like a section, all of our, you know, have the environment, have a healthy environment and quality of life, have a separate section and not in the strategic plan and not be co-opted by, or you know, it just doesn't have much position in the present one. 
And the little that mention of it seems to have gotten co-opted under economic development. And so I think it's really critical that uh, environmental issues and, and environmental health uh, have, um, have much more of a place in the strategic plan. So <clears throat> wherever that takes when, you know, for us to be monitoring that as that process goes on, as well as the comprehensive plan, I think that's going to be critical for us in the future. Um, I have one um, announcement for, uh, we know about all the cleanups for Earth Week. Um, <clears throat> this week, there is also, I would invite you all to come out tomorrow night downtown and have dinner for the Dine Out for a Difference because uh, the downtown uh, businesses, uh, now uh, called the district, uh, have, they choose an, a charity to give 10% of their revenue every month for Dine Out for a Difference. And it happens to fall on Earth Day uh, this month. And they've chosen the, the uh, local uh, chapter of the Sierra Club as their um, charity of the month. So Sunco Sierra Club is going to be receiving 10% of their um, revenues. Everything that about a dozen restaurants are taking in at, on the district in the district tomorrow night, and also the Ring Workspaces is um, matching that dollar for dollar up to fifteen hundred dollars. Oh, that's great! So mm -hmm. that's um, uh, you know, so that's pretty exciting too. So that's something else that's happening on Earth Day, among all the myriad of other things. <laughs> you all have to eat. Come on down to the to the downtown uh, restaurants and do that tomorrow night if you get a chance. That's uh, all I've got. Okay, thank you. Uh, to what Glenna said, as far as the comp and strategic plans, do you know if a uh, timeline of meetings have been released yet? I know nothing about them. Okay. I have a lot of question marks like written on my page, okay. um, so I I'll get some okay. of those answers and figure it out. Like it's early days. With, yeah. You know, both yeah, but I mean. It's early days, but I am I know a little bit more about the comp plan, so it's good to be involved, like say that you want to be involved in the comp plan so I can make sure that it works with your schedule, you know, so it's, um, yeah, so okay. I don't know about the strategic plan as much, but I'll, I'll, I'll ask some questions. Okay, great. Thank you very much. John? I guess the, the piney point discussion that, uh, the outline that you provided just, uh, Give me the, the thought. You know, hopefully, we have nothing similar here in Clearwater. <laughs> but you know, you, you don't know. I mean, it, I'm sure there were many people who bought their homes at, you know that area. That uh, yeah, there's a big berm out there. But you know, what's beyond it? You know, what is it all about? It was not part of their you know, initial due diligence. Um, and uh, I'm sure if there was something of you know, that scale here, we would know about it. But I'm sure you know every community has its ills, and uh, uh, you know, are there ones that uh, we should be giving some consideration to, uh, an additional focus, you know, for the long term? Because I think as uh, this one uh, down there indicates, these kind of uh, environmental hazards or problems don't get solved overnight, but it takes you know, a disaster sometimes to really you know, focus on them. And uh, so if there are any that uh, you know, do have potential uh, public health uh, issues concerned with, you know, a drug, uh, related to them, um, you know, it might be uh, something that, um, you know, perhaps in some of our field trips, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sure there's a super fun site or two floating around our borders somewhere. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I don't think we need to name any at this point, but uh, it might be something to uh, at least have an understanding of uh, in the community. All right. Uh, thank you very much, John. Um, yeah, the only thing I have to say, I think we've mentioned a lot of our Earth Day cleanups planned for tomorrow. Bay Park, State Street Park, uh, Saturday there's cleanups at North Beach um, and Glen Oaks Park and Crest Lake Park. 
and at Moccasin Lake Park, there's uh, volunteers needed to remove Caesar weed and other invasives. Uh, just to find out about those and other volunteer opportunities, there's myclearwater.com slash volunteers, and you know, find out about how to get involved there and other places. Um, and also, if you do have any photos for green print, to send those in by Friday so they can be included <laughs> in the next can I make green print. Can I make a comment? Yes, please. Sorry, I missed my turn. I'm coming back. I actually had two things. Okay. Um, I've been to Christ Lake Park, and I've also been to the St. Pierre Park, and there's, and imagine clear water. I know there's been cutbacks in the canopy cover, I mean the shade, and both Christ Lake Park and the St. Pierre, the St. Pete Pier Park, don't have any shade, and it's a terrible oversight. At the splash pad, those kids are burning up in the middle of summer. Anybody who's out there, there's like three umbrellas, and that's it. It's all bright sunshine. Apparently, away from it, there's a canopy that's built a permanent structure that some dermatologists contributed. But it is a great concern to me that uh, here at Imagine Clearwater, we're cutting back on the shade for the whole park and for the playgrounds because it really detracts from the overall usefulness for the people who actually live here. And also, they need more seating because parents need to sit somewhere when their kids are playing on the playground. So I just thought that was important enough to bring up here. The second thing I wondered about is this meeting, many, many city meetings and many council meetings and many advisory board meetings are streamed live on Facebook, but I don't think this one is. No, this one is not. It, it, it might be televised right now, but previously it was recorded and available for viewing. It was not, it, it has not been a live meeting in the past. So I know there's been concerns about some people who would like to participate or watch remotely live. Should we, is there a reason why it's not? Is it something that could be done? It's a staff reason. We don't have the people to be able to answer all of the questions, to respond to comments. So that's generally why we don't have an, inter, an, in, an interactive aspect other than in person. Right. Well, Facebook city council meetings, it's not interactive. Comments are not responded to. It's merely viewing. I think that can probably be something, a topic that you send me that ends up going into that agenda item okay. for next time. Okay. And that's it. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, and I'll say to that point, I uh, know there's a number of other advisory boards that meet at other times that aren't as advantageous for people to join and are not televised at all uh, for later viewing. So at least we do have the, that option, if that is how it is. Um, and with that, I think we're all done. Okay. We're done. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my gosh.